Hello, friends of old school compression. Today we'll be looking at the TAB U373A. Here we have a design from the late 1960s. And before we take a listen, let's pop the thing open to see what's going on here. We have an all discrete design with just transistors and transformers. There's a total of four of them, one input, one output, and two interstage transformers. So we enter the module right here. And right after the input transformer, we have our actual gain reduction element consisting of two transistors wired as a variable resistor. They're hooked up in series and in reverse in order to cancel out any distortion. Also, this gain reduction section is entirely balanced in order to represent both the positive and negative half wave of the attack phase of the signal. That is quite nifty. Then we hit the first interstage transformer and go to the makeup amp, which feeds the output transformer. From there, we go to another interstage transformer, which feeds the CV section. Here's your threshold, and this would be your timing network. And from there, we go straight to the basis of the aforementioned two transistors that act as gain reduction element. Last but not least, we have a proper meter driver section down here, which you can calibrate and you can connect any 100 milliamp meter to represent your gain reduction. Whew, there really is a lot going on. The front plate, on the other hand, is quite austere. You can just toggle between compression and limiting, labeled K and B, and then you have your release times. The three higher ones labeled in red are automatic and will capture short transients while preventing pumping with overall very slow movements. Then I should mention that even in compression mode, the limiter is always active, preventing any signals to go over plus six dB broadcasting level. And now where's your threshold, you may ask? There is none, so you simply set the compression with the input level. The hotter you drive it, the more compression you get. Simple as that. Enough tech talk now, let's hear it in action. Here's a simple drum loop direct signal. I'd like to start with a very gentle setting. Let's go for limiting and the pretty long release time. I want to show you the color this thing imparts, and there's spades of it. I'll be switching around between the compressed and bypassed signals. I've matched the levels by ear, and both modules are stereo linked in order to prevent any left-right shifting. And as I mentioned earlier, the threshold is set by the input level. So let's crank it up a bit to see what happens. I'm staying with this setting for now. Let's push it a bit further and shorten the release time. Compression mode, just adding a wee bit to give it some color and movement. A little more gain reduction and a bit quicker. And here's the shortest release time, and I'm pushing it now quite heavily. Time to reset the ears with some gentle acoustic guitar. Here's your dry signal. Again, let's start with a gentle setting with a slow release time, and I'm not driving it all too hard.
now a quicker release time and more compression. The modules are still stereo linked. Enough stereo, let's go from mono. Here's a DI bass, and this is the dry signal. Slowish limiting first. Quicker release time. Gentle compression with a rather long release. And here's what it sounds like when I'm driving it really hard. There you go. That's it for today. Thanks for watching until the end and I'll catch you next time.